What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna kick off a new series on how to create different kinds of animations inside of SketchUp. So we're gonna talk about different ways to use native tools to create animations. We're also gonna talk about some other extensions that you can use to create different kinds of animations as well. So as a part of this series, if you want to follow along with any of the example files, I'm gonna make them available at TheSketchUpEssentials.com slash animation. So if you want to follow along with any of those files, I'll be putting those up there as we go throughout this series. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So for this particular video, we're going to focus on creating kind of a walkthrough animation. So nothing inside of the SketchUp model is actually going to move. The only thing it's going to move is the camera. So we're just going to create a walkthrough animation where we kind of walk from the bottom of the stairs up into this office complex model. And so this office complex model is a 3D warehouse model from Taz 1985. Um, it's the office building. So if you want to look that up, you can download this and follow along. And so the way that this works, the way that animations in general work inside of SketchUp is they animate transitions between scenes. And so you may know that it is possible inside of SketchUp under view animation to save different scenes. So for example, if I go to view animation, I click on save scene or add scene, that's going to save this current view so that you can come back to it. Meaning now if I was to orbit outside of this, like if I was to orbit over here, and then I was to click on this scene, this would take me back into this camera view that I had active when I first created this uh, created this scene. And so you can manage these scenes on the right hand side of your page under scenes as well. So you can name these over here or in SketchUp 2019, you can also right click and just rename them up here. So you can manage your different scenes using the scenes manager. And so you can see how if we look at the properties of the scene, and this is in the scene section of our tray on the right hand side of the page. Um, if you go to window, default tray, show tray, and make sure that the option for scenes is checked, then you're gonna have this over here in your tray. Or if you're on a Mac, you're just gonna to wanna to open up the animation window. But you can see how there's a number of different options in here for different camera properties that get saved as a part of your scene view. So for example, you can set your scenes to maintain all of your different styles, your camera locations, uh, what layers are visible. So all of those things get saved inside of your scene view. Meaning um, at any point, if you want to go back to that scene, you can click on it and that's all saved in this view. And so there's an option in here at the top for include in animation. And so the reason there's an option in here for include in animation is because if we were to create a second scene, like let's say we were to create this one right here, and then we were just come up here and right click and click on add, we now have two scenes inside of this view. Well, what SketchUp does by default is it animates the transition between these two tabs. So you can see how by clicking back and forth between these two tabs, I can animate my camera transition between multiple different points. And so this is the simplest kind of animation that we can create inside of SketchUp. Um, and you can also set different things about, the, about that transition inside of your animation options. And so let's go ahead and let's add maybe a third camera view maybe right here. And you can kind of fine adjust this um, using the first person camera tools. You could also adjust your field of view if you wanted to. So that's another thing that can get saved inside of your camera view if you want it to be saved. But let's go ahead and we'll just right click in here and we'll add another scene. And note that when you animate this, this is going to move in order between the different scenes that you have. So you can see how right now, because this scene three got put in before scene two, it's gonna show up first in our animation. And we don't want that, so I'm just gonna right click on this and click move right. And so in the simplest possible way inside of SketchUp, we've created an animation. And so if you wanna play this, you can go to view, animation, play. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up a little window right here that's going to play an animation of your camera transitioning between your different scenes. And so you can see how right now it's a little bit clunky. The reason it's clunky is because this has a little bit of a pause in between your different camera views, meaning that uh, every time your camera moves to a new camera location, you get this kind of like stop and then jump 
into your next scene. And so we can adjust that by clicking on the stop button and going to view animation settings. And so inside of our settings, you can see how there's a couple different things we can change. So for example, first of all, we can set how long the scene transitions are. So that's how long it takes your camera to move from one point to another point. So if I wanted this to be longer between my different scenes, I could change this to something like five seconds. And so now if I was to go into view animation and I was to play this, It'll take longer for this to um, animate the transition between scene number one and scene number two. So you can see how here now this camera transition is a lot slower than it was before between your different points. So you can use your scene transition time to adjust the length of your animation. And so the other option that we have in here is your scene delay. And so what your scene delay does is that sets if your camera waits between different points in your animation. So let's say for example that we didn't want this to pause before it goes to the next scene. We could just take our scene delay and we could just set that to zero seconds. And so if we set that to zero seconds and then we go back to view animation and we play this, now instead of pausing between your different camera locations, this is just gonna animate a smooth transition between one camera location and the other. So you can see how instead of pausing here, it no longer pauses, it just moves immediately into that new camera view. And so you do need to be a little bit careful with this because sometimes if you have really fast scene transitions, it'll kind of bounce between your different uh, camera locations and it feels very clunky. So it'll just kind of go, you know, it'll hit that point and then it'll go bam and it'll go into the next point and your camera's just kind of bouncing around. So you need to be just a little bit careful with how long your scenes are and if you want that scene delay in here or not. But what I want to do is let's add a couple more camera views and then let's export this as an animation. And one other thing I want to point out is if you remember over here on the right hand side, each one of these scenes has a little box for include in animation. If you uncheck that box, you can see how now your scene two shows up inside of parentheses. And if we play our animation, it'll no longer animate the transition to scene two. It'll go straight to scene three. So if you have a view that you want to save, but you don't necessarily want to animate that, um, you can set this to go directly between between, or you can set this to exclude different camera locations. So you can use this um, to kind of fine tune your animations. And so we'll go ahead and we'll turn this back on. And then let's just set this camera view up so that it flies into this little courtyard a little bit. We'll add a scene here. Then we'll add another scene right here. And one thing that you should be kind of careful of when you're doing this is just be careful with how sharp your transition is between different camera views. So like for example, you don't necessarily want to have one camera view facing one direction then immediately have another one facing the other direction because that can be a little bit jarring. Instead, um, to kind of smooth your camera path, just to add a couple different scenes in here for that. And so one thing I'm going to do with this next scene is I'm going to adjust my field of view to something like 45. And so what this will do, and I'll add a scene here, is you can see how as we move this around, and we're going through the ground right here, so we're gonna have to adjust that a little bit. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna adjust your camera field of view um, so that you can see more in your camera lens in that scene six than you could in scene five. And so the last thing before we kind of take our animation is, and we export it is I wanna show you how to update a camera view inside of your scene. So let's say for example, because this one's going into the ground, that's not necessarily ideal, but that's what the natural camera transition is doing. So let's take both of these and we're just gonna adjust them up a little bit. So you can see how what I'm doing is I'm adjusting my camera view so it's a little bit higher. Well, when you do this, you can right click on your scene and click on update to update your camera view to the most current camera location. So you can see how now, where before our scene five was going into the ground because this camera view was really low, now it's been updated to something a little bit higher and so it's no longer going into the ground. So we could also adjust this one. 
and then right click and update so that we have that new camera location. So now what we have is we have a scene with six different scenes that's gonna fly through our model. So if you were to do a view animation, whoops, and we were to click on play, this would animate the transition between six different scenes. And because each one of them has been set to be a six second or a two second clip, we would have a 12 second long video. And so one thing you might want to consider doing, because you can see how at the very end of this, this just like bounces out of that last view. So you don't actually get to see this view very fast. One thing you may want to consider doing is on your sixth scene, you may want to add another scene with the same camera view. So this will pause here for a second. So instead of enabling trans scene transitions, you can add a scene at the very end to make sure that your camera kind of lingers on that last camera location. And so you can see how this gives us this kind of full fly through and it's giving us a real nice view of this office complex. Note that right here, your uh, field of view actually transitions a little bit to a wider field of view. But here at the end, your camera actually sits there for two seconds because you added that scene seven. And so now that we've got a pretty decent animation path in here, let's go ahead and export this to a video. So you can actually ex export this to like an MP4 or a, I, I don't remember exactly the file formats, but you can actually export this to a video file that you can play on your computer or you can send to people or whatever you wanna do. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save my model. And so once you've done that, what you can do is you can go up to file and look for the option for export. And you can see how this gives you a number of different options for different things that you can export. Well, in this situation, we wanna export an animation. And so this will only show up as an option if you have multiple scenes inside of your model. But we wanna mouse over this, and there's two options in here. So there's an image set, which would export, um, if, you, if you think about videos, videos are basically individual frames that have been stitched together to create the illusion of moving um, camera views. What image set would do is this would export a number of different still images, which you could then stitch yourself into another video. I want to select the option for video because we want SketchUp to do that for us. So I'm gonna click on video. We'll find our folder and let's go ahead and call this office building, or you know what, let's call it courtyard fly through. And so that's where we can set our name. And then on this drop down, you can select the kind of video you want to export. Well, in this situation, I do want to export an MP4, so I'm going to leave it here. And then before you do this, you can click on the option or the button for options down here. And so the options is going to let you set all of the different options having to do with your video. So you can set your resolution, for example, to like full HD or HD or SD, you can also customize the size of this video if you want. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and select full HD. It shouldn't affect the file size too much. Just note that the higher the resolution, the longer this will take, and also the bigger the files will be when you do your export. So you can use the line scale multiplier. I believe that's gonna adjust how thick your lines are. So if you want your lines to show up a little bit better, you can use this multiplier in order to do that. If you click on this button for preview frame size, this is gonna show you how big that actual video um, is going to be. And then down here, down here you have options to set your number of frames in your video. So you have anywhere from five to 30. Just remember that the more frames, the smoother this is going to be, but also that means it's gonna take longer to export everything and stitch it. So you can also set this to loop to your starting scene so you can make it a looping video. And then I just leave anti-alias rendering on when I do this. And then I'm not really worried about this last option. Let's go ahead and click OK. And so now we're ready to export our video. So in order to do that, we're just gonna click on the button for export. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna take all of the different frames in your animation. It's going to export them to image files, and then it's gonna stitch everything together into a moving image. So this is gonna take a little while for SketchUp to do. So we'll just let this work, and then we'll come back and take a look at what we've created.
So now if we navigate to that folder, you can see how there's an MP4 file in there that we can play in order to see our video. So you can see how this has been exported to an MP4 file. So I have an actual video in here that I can now use and export and do whatever I want with. So, and you can set as many tabs in here as you want. So one thing I may want to consider is maybe adjusting that so when it bounces back around to the end, um, I may want to turn off the loop back option that we had selected because you can see how that kind of takes me through the ground which is not ideal but it's still a great animation and it was really easy to create so you can add as many tabs as you want as far as I know to this and create longer animations or little scenes that you can kind of stitch together um, into other videos. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you like the series idea? And also, are there any kinds of animations you'd like to see covered inside of the series? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.